Awe Bruce and sisters, what's up? It's Kapi here and welcome back to the channel. This is where we don't just talk vibes, we go deep, we go real deep. And today's story goes way, way back before the first Bri fire was ever lit, before the first Asahai was ever used. And I have to make sure that I pronounce that word very well because I messed it up on TikTok not too long ago. Asegi, Asegi. I'm talking 40,000 years ago. We are about to uncover how the people of Southern Africa came to be what they are today. And it's wild how much DNA can tell us about who we are if we zoom out and follow the story through time. Let's go. So picture this. It's around 40,000 years ago, give or take. There are already people living off of the land hunting, gathering, making tools out of stones, and leaving behind some of the oldest rock art that the world has ever seen. These were the ancestors of the sand people, the original OGs, the original Okapis, if you will. Even before that, 120,000 years ago, anatomically modern human beings were already in Southern Africa. That's how deep these roots go. And these ancestors of the sand were, were everywhere. The Cape, the Northern Cape region, Botswana, Namibia, Zimbabwe, even Angola. They held on to their culture. Their culture was quite strong for thousands of years. Even through droughts, migrations, and changes in the land. Until things started shifting. Now, let's fast forward to about 2,000 years ago. This is where things start to get spicy. A small group of East African pastoralists, pastoralists, farmers moves in. Not a massive wave, just kind of like a sprinkle of them. These were cattle herders that brought with them their animals and also some East African ancestry into that region. But instead of taking over the region, they were absorbed into the already existing sand communities. And that mixing gave rise to a new group, the Khoi Khoi herders. Now the term Khoi sand was later used to describe both the hunter gatherers, the sand, and the Khoi Khoi herders because of their shared ancestry. Then came the big game changers the Bantu-speaking farmers. They came all the way from West Africa with iron tools, crops, and livestock. The expansion into Southern Africa wasn't like in one big rush, not like one massive migration like from the movie Prince of Egypt. It wasn't like that. It, it happened in waves over hundreds of years. Some groups went east, another group went south, splitting and kind of branching into new groups. You have the southeastern Bantu and the southwestern Bantu. As these Bantu speakers moved into their new territories, they also started mixing with the local Khoisan people. But in some places they mixed a lot and in other places, they barely mixed at all. Take this for example. The Tswana and the Sutu have roughly about 20% Khoisan DNA in your genes. But when you look at places like Mozambique or Malawi, they have almost none. So this tells us that how much mixing happened depended on where these groups settled. By the way, most of this Khoisan DNA mixing actually happened within the last 1,500 years. But now let's look at the more recent time. And that brings us to about 400 years ago when the last major migration happened. This was when colonial powers entered the chat. The Dutch, the Portuguese, and the British. And they didn't come alone. Through the Indian Ocean slave trade, they obviously brought slaves from South Asia, East Asia, and even Madagascar. And that added another layer of DNA mixing, especially in Mozambique and in the Cape. So 
So now let's get into the how. Like how did they actually mix with one another? You see, the researchers found that when these Bantu speakers moved into the region, there was actually a pattern of how the DNA mixed together. And they found something called sex-biased gene flow. And what this told them was that it was always, or in most cases, it was Khoisan women who were passing on their genes and Bantu-speaking men who were passing on theirs. So when they came together and had children, that gave rise to the new groups. And what this also tells us is that there were probably battles and fights that took place, the dominance of one group over another. This is actually really important for understanding the current population dynamics in Southern Africa. You see, when these scientists started extracting DNA from ancient bones, and I'm talking about from around 2,000 years ago, the older bones from around 1,500 years ago had a lot more Khoisan DNA than Bantu-speaking DNA. But then those from around 500 years ago had a lot more Bantu-speaking DNA than Khoisan, which shows a major shift that as these Bantu-speaking farmers moved further south or east, the hunter-gatherers, the Khoisan, were either pushed out or they were absorbed into these groups. Some of those bones that they studied from around 500 years ago, they found were more related to the Tsonga and the Venda, and then others were more related to the Nguni groups, like the Zulu. Now, what it also tells us is that even with the mixing of the Khoisan, if you put that DNA aside, there were actually still other genetic differences between these Bantu groups, which is how they could tell the difference between them. So I just want to pause here for a second because I really want to show you guys this map that I found very interesting. In this map, what you are looking at is the Southern African region, right? And all of these gray circles represent different Bantu-speaking groups. But you can see that some of them have blue and they have varying amounts of blue. The blue represents the percent of Khoisan DNA found within those groups. So different areas have a different amount of Khoisan. Now that could be because of Khoisan migration into those areas as the Bantus moved in. In those areas, they found more Khoisan or less Khoisan. Something else that I forgot to mention was that the numbers within the brackets represent how many generations ago this genetic mixing happened between certain Bantu groups and the Khoisan. So the Sutu, for example, 26 generations ago, the Twana, 24, and the Zulu, also roughly about 26. And each generation is roughly a period of 30 to 40 years. But look, for example, at the Zulu and the Sutu, the Twana, and the Southwest Bantu. Look at how much of their DNA is Khoisan. So what's the takeaway from all of this? If you ask me, we have been mixing, adapting, migrating, for thousands of years. Southern Africa, the land and its people have never just been one thing. From as early as 2000 years ago, there is evidence of that genetic mixing. I wanna change the conclusion of this video. I didn't like where it was going. Look, every one of us comes from a community that is associated to a certain culture. That culture is defined by the home that we grow up in, uh, the faiths that we follow, the community that we live in, how that community uh, celebrates things, the traditions and the norms and the customs of that community, what we define as being good and bad, and of course, the languages that we speak. And being part of a culture is, of course, how we kind of identify ourselves. Who are we? Where do we come from? Who do we belong to? And for some of us, that even gives us a sense of purpose. What are we meant to be doing here? But identifying as part of a culture also means seeing others as outsiders. And as South Africans, a proper melting pot of cultures, what I see more often than not is that focus on the things that make us different from one another. And I think the whole point of this video was to show that yes, maybe from a cultural perspective, we have uh, quite a few differences, but from a different perspective, even from a genetic perspective, we might have a lot more in common with one another than we want to admit. And that kind of acknowledging that makes a lot of our disagreements unnecessary. Why are we focusing on the things that make us different when 
within our blood, within our genes, within our bones, there are things that actually tie us together. Does that make sense? Some of you will get this, some of you won't. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. If you found something new that you never heard before, let me know. Have a conversation with me and I'll catch you guys in the next video.